okay uh, hi guys uh, this is where we left off uh, last time okay and um, what we are basically gonna do is going to modify this program and write it in a bit different way okay uh, what first thing we're going to do is we're going to replace this um, while loop okay with a for loop okay we're just going to understand how a for loop works okay it works very similar to a while loop okay but it's a bit different okay one more thing uh, that will happen is we'll make this program really very small okay let's see how we'll go ahead and do it okay let's replace it with for loop and as we go ahead i'll explain how this uh, for loop works okay this for loop is basically has three parts okay one is the first part the first part is called as the initialization uh, for exactly for example I'm going to initialize dollar equal to zero. Okay, it's going to be executed only the first time uh, a for loop is entered. Okay, and uh, then it has the condition. Okay, this one. It's going to be executed every uh, time the for loop is entered. Okay, as exactly the same way as the condition in while loop. Okay, and uh, it has an increment part where I'm just going to do this. It's what this one is right? I can just place this here. Okay, remove the semicolon. Okay, so this is how uh, you know our program will get a bit smaller. Okay, uh, one thing is you know we have the initialization, now we have the condition, and then we have the increment. Okay, and everything is the same. And uh, one more thing we can do really is let's just uh, try to eliminate a lot of variables. I think we have too many variables for a very small uh, program. Okay. So what we could do is, uh, you know, we could do this arithmetic expression in place inside a print of print of statement itself. Okay, let's do that. Okay, and the statement is not needed. Okay, and uh, as I had explained, right, uh, as a while loop we can have only one statement without this open brace, open curly brace, and close curly brace. A for loop can also have a single statement without these two. So let's remove them. Okay, we have a single statement. Okay. And another thing we could remove the variables here is okay, lots of variables we could just remove. Okay, um, step one and uh, okay, we have removed uh, quite a lot of variables and just uh, remove this uh, corresponding variables as well. Okay, we have removed a lot of variables here. Cool, uh, our program is really very small. Okay. Uh, we have just one variable here okay we have just defined it as int and uh, that is what is the thing we used in our for loop okay we have declared as uh, dollar as int and we'll start with dollar sorry it's not it should not be zero it should be one okay so dollar you start from one and it go till four okay if you need till five you say less than equal to so from one to five uh, you print all the values of uh, this thing so this is how it works okay so the first time you know for dollar equal to one gets executed now dollar is one so now this dollar, this condition statement gets executed now okay and after this condition statement gets executed whatever in, inside the for loop gets executed yeah that means this statement after this statement gets executed what happens is this increment statement gets executed now previously dollar was one after this increment statement now dollar will be two okay now after dollar will be two uh, now the condition statement gets executed the work of this initialization statement is over now okay now this condition statement is executed so dollar is less than five that is two is less than five so now what happens now this printer statement gets executed okay after this printer statement gets executed again uh, this uh, increment statement gets executed now dollar is three okay and three is less than equal to five and again this uh, printer statement gets executed okay after that uh, dollar is again uh, incremented to four okay four is less than equal to five and then this uh, statement gets again executed and dollar is incremented to five so five is less than equal to five because five is equal to five and then this statement executed now dollar will become six okay after when dollar is six uh, six this statement is false and then so uh, you know the the statement of execution of statement uh, exits from this for loop okay and after the for loop there's no other statement okay 
so it exits the program okay so this is a very uh, simple uh, program now okay so we have actually very simplified the program uh, too much okay and uh, there's a very, one little problem which we're going to fix before uh, you know or before we are completely done with this program because I think we have spent a lot of time with this program learning a lot of concepts okay we have almost beaten it down to death and I really don't want to want this program to die okay so uh, one small problem okay we just gonna have we're just having a lot and lot of uh, magic numbers here okay okay this is one small mistake here this one has to be 42.3 okay there's a lot of magic numbers here okay so like what are magic numbers this one okay uh this okay and uh, this these are just numbers okay for example right if the exchange rate changes from 42.3 to 43.2 i have to go inside the program and search where all these things have used okay and change them uh, so it's actually very bad practice so instead of that uh, i'll introduce a new concept called a symbolic constants okay we will define constants which have names okay these are not variables these are actually constants okay so what happens is when before a program compiles there's something called the preprocessor okay so what it does is any constant it sees okay let me show you how it works define hash define okay let's uh, define this um, thing okay so, so it's a common practice uh, to for this all the um, symbolic constant these are symbolic constants and this is the syntax how you uh, how you define them okay you say hash define and then whatever name you want to give the constant and whatever value of the constant you want to give okay it can be integer it can be floating it can be string it can be anything okay hash define exchange rate okay 42.3 okay um, as I was saying uh, all the symbolic constants okay you can substitute them for either flow integer float string anything okay anything and you could use them anywhere in the program um, so what happens is whatever you have substituted them for right for example exchange rate will just simply get substituted by 42.3 okay it's it, the you no know, uh, actually what goes to the compiler is 42.3 not exchange underscore right okay so it's a very uh, easy way of uh, has defined easy way of you know making your programs very much uh, readable okay so okay so let's make it much more readable now so exchange rate okay so we just have a really uh, long uh, for loop here okay so we just sort of uh, split it in two different lines okay we'll to understand this okay so this is how i'm going to substitute uh, all the variables here okay so what i've basically done is instead of one i have placed in it dollar okay and instead of five i placed up underscore dollar instead of just uh, one again you know dollar stepping up uh, by one i'm placed at a step and which all these things i have defined it here okay and another thing is i can place this 42.3 right it doesn't look good like it's an exchange rate okay i placed exchange rate here so what basically this happens is the program is very much uh, readable and uh, we can uh, easily modify it's easily modifiable for example exchange rate changes from 42 to a 3 to whatever 42 or 2 okay you can easily modify it okay so you you have all your modifications at one single place okay i don't have to go all over the program and uh, search uh, where all my constants are there and go ahead and modify it i can modify all this here okay 
okay so that that's what i would want to tell you with this uh, program i am almost uh, done with this program okay so with this we are done with this exchange rate program okay we going to do something different uh, next time okay so before this closing out uh, let me just uh, you know run the program and show you how it works gcc change rate e4 that's what i've so stored it as okay and okay see you have five this one and neatly displayed all the other this one okay so this i'm done okay uh, let's get to a different program next time